Hello and welcome to the Go Read Some Books podcast. I'm Shane Skelton. This is Josh Fillmore. Hello, hello. And if you are wondering today exactly what it means to be a conservative, then stay tuned. We've got the answer for you. Absolutely. All right, Josh, we're talking today about a book I'm really excited to bring to the listeners today. It's called America the Strong. America, baby. America, <laughs> written by William J. Bennett and John T.E. Cribb. Um, the back of the cover says that we live in a culture that often dismisses and ridicules conservative values. By the time liberal professors, the news media, Hollywood get through with them, many young Americans are convinced conservative and means extremist or intolerant. It's a distortion that endangers America's future. And Bill Bennett and co-author John Cribb explain what conservatism really means. And I think it's a great book, Conservative Ideas to Spark the New Generation. I've read a lot of books about America and conservatism. But if, if you want something that's simple, boils it down, um, this is the book for you. I'm telling you, it's a great little book to read. And... Uh, it has nothing to do with being a Republican or Democrat. I mean, it has nothing to do with that. These are conservative values that we're going to talk about today out of this book that shape this nation. Mm -hmm. Now, many people don't know that the term conservative means to keep safe, to maintain, or to preserve. So in actuality, conservatives want to preserve society's best value and wisdom. So in America, being conservative involves a commitment to the principles upon which this country was founded, ideas found in the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution, the Federalist Papers, and more importantly, I think these truths are found in the Bible. Mm -hmm. uh, such, for instance, you know, all people are created equal and all have the right to think and, and to speak freely. See, conservative believe that these founding principles, they are what have made the United States a very powerful force for good in the world. They've helped America become the greatest and strongest nation that ever has been. Mm -hmm. And I also believe that these values can help future generations to come. So if we don't cherish these values and pass them down to our children, then they'll have nothing to build their life upon. Right. So we won't conservative values that we pass down to our children and uh, i think this book can give us a great little starting point for that okay now my question is as you said it uh conservatism really started in the bible um you know kind of touch on that a little bit well we will <clears throat> okay so in that book all right mm -hmm. i got you i didn't know it does it really deep dive into biblical aspects of it or well there's more... certain christian values that gotcha. we'll get into throughout the book that that uh, conservatism and conservatives hold true. Right. Now, when I say conservative, let me just say this. There's a lot of Republicans that don't mm -hmm. believe this, and there are some Democrats that believe this, right. and then vice versa. Right. So it doesn't, it, it doesn't matter whether you're blue or red. Mm -hmm. These are, are conservative principles that I think is what made this country great, regardless mm -hmm. of you being Republican, Democrat, Libertarian, or whatever. Uh, so I, I think that you know, as we go through here, you'll see the biblical principles that come out, and, okay. and we'll get into that. And now, the what the way that the author explains conservatism, he does it in an acrostic, and he gives us the word flint as the acrostic, F L I N T. Now, I've heard that term before, a flint conservative. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what that meant. No. Yeah. When you said Flint, I, was, I immediately thought about caveman striking. Exactly. Making yeah. a spark, you so, know, <laughs> the musket, the yeah. big Flint musket, you know, so, big yeah. cloud of smoke. Yeah. yeah. My first thought was, you know, are we hard rock conservatives? <laughs> I mean, I'm not, I'm not quite sure what that means. <laughs> right. So, but uh, it, it's, a, it's an acrostic that has it, helped me to 
define and clarify exactly what it means to be a conservative. Because a lot of times we don't know how to put it into words. Right. You know, well, I'm a conservative. And then you immediately get, you know, lumped into that bucket that you hate everybody other yeah. than white people. Oh, that's and then, it. You know, that's it. You're you hate about, border wall. Yeah, I mean, you're, if you're for border walls, you hate the Mexicans. All, you don't yeah. want nobody to have nothing because the only that's people right. are supposed to have uh, anything that's is right. the rich people. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. get it. So you don't really know how to defend what you believe. Mm -hmm. So the acrostic word flint, it will put it together for you. It'll it'll be able to help you talk intelligently and at least give you a guideline of uh to go by the hey this is what i believe right and so let me dive into them uh these are five concepts that are critical for understanding american conservative thought so let's begin with the letter f okay all right f stands for free enterprise now liberals news media all i mean it's all over the news man mm -hmm. uh they they want you to think that capitalism is evil and that the welfare state, the government, that's the best way to equal out the country. Right. But we as conservatives, we know and recognize that that's not true. Right. Yeah. Free enterprise or capitalism, if you want to call it that, you know, that's a wicked word today. <laughs> uh, but is the it is the best known system the world has ever seen. Right. It creates good jobs. It, 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 it creates better living conditions. It is basically raised nations and countless of millions of people out of poverty and made their lives a thousand times better than what right. it would have been before. Well, and to kind of tie into that, you've been in, out of the country. I've been out of the yes. country before. And you see all these other countries that don't, you know, base their countries off of capitalism. And you see where they're at. Yeah, but here's where it really yeah. gets me is the fact that if it's so evil, Right. Mm -hmm. Then why is it that the dollar and the euro always stay on top of all the rest of the currency? It's amazing how that and works. It's, you know, and it's like, you know, I used to be a financial advisor, which, you know, you know, for Merrill Lynch. And, you know, you watch. That's, that's before you went bankrupt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just kidding. He's never been bankrupt. No. But um, but, you know, we used to watch, you know, we used to trade currencies and stuff, you know, on the back end. Mm -hmm. And you, you watch these currencies and it's like they, they're never going to catch up. And it's and it's amazing right. because all of those other, you know, currencies and stuff are usually and I say usually because there's there's a few that stick out, uh, you know, above the others. But yeah. usually the countries that stand out the most are capitalist countries. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, liberty is closely connected to free enterprise. Mm -hmm. At its best, free enterprise makes possible the liberty that we have. Right. We, we, we choose our own goals. Mm -hmm. And then we work toward those goals and we work toward those dreams to make it happen. And conservatives recognize the benefit of competition. It's a vital part of enterprise. Now, competitions, are, that's not an evil thing. Mm -hmm. It's not. It creates better products. It creates better services. It lowers prices. It encourages entrepreneurship. It fosters good, hard work. The competition of free enterprise is the major reason businesses are more efficient and productive, much more mm -hmm. better than government. Right. Absolutely be more better than government. Now, just to kind of off subject of that, mm -hmm. you've probably heard about all these sports teams to where everybody's a winner and that that uh, participation it, that, trophies. Yeah. <laughs> well, what is that? The, the last one I heard that I laughed at. Now, this has been years ago, so this is anything current. But I want to say it was Canada, not to pick on Canadians, but um, they had actually had youth soccer. OK. And so what they did is they took away the scoreboard. Right. And so yeah, nobody knew. I heard that. You heard about this. Yeah. And then where they and eventually the kids were keeping score in their head yeah. and they didn't care. Yeah. And then they took away the soccer ball. <laughs> so everybody was kicking in air. I'm like, come on. What does that teach, though? Really? I mean, let's yeah. boil that down, because these kids, honestly and truthfully, when they get to the real world, that's not the real world. Yeah. You know, yeah, and so absolutely. they're not going to know. You know, the world is full of winners and losers. You can't be both. You can't yeah. all be winners. There's got to be somebody that's going to lose eventually. So. You know, they're they're brainwashing these kids, unfortunately, to, to feel like, you know, that they can't lose. And you and I both know we've read enough books and listened to enough books about, you know, business and entrepreneurs yeah. and that kind yeah. of deal that the only way to actually succeed is to learn from your failures. Absolutely. So if you can't learn from that, how are you going to succeed to be, begin with? And of course, yeah. that's what capitalism shows you, that if you start a business venture and it fails, then 
that wasn't a very good business venture. Yeah. Learn from your mistakes. Yeah. Try again. Right. You know? So now, with any human institution, you, we recognize the fact that free enterprise sometimes brings problems because mm-hmm. we're all sinners. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Competition can bring out the best in people. And it can also bring out the worst in people. <laughs> I get it. You know, corporations sometimes take advantage of people, both customers right. and employees alike. But despite its drawbacks, free enterprise is without equal in giving people the opportunity to learn a good living. Mm-hmm. You know, that's what this country is built upon. Alexander Hamilton calls our called our country a commercial republic because he understands that the and the founders understood that free enterprise is what will lift men out of poverty, lift them out of the class section mm-hmm. and system that they had been used to, and give them a life to live. So enterprise, free enterprise, is the cornerstone of our republic, of our nation, and our liberty mm-hmm. and and its success. So that's F. Now the letter L stands for limited government. Limited government. Yay. (laughs) And all God's people said. Amen. Amen. (laughs) Conservatives support the principle of limited government. Now, here's what that means. Government that is powerful enough to protect people's rights and vigorous enough to help make the country a better place, but not so powerful that it keeps sticking its nose into people's businesses and stepping on their liberties. Right. You know, the founders realize that over time government have a natural tendency to assume greater power and exhort more and more control over people. So in framing the Constitution, the founders did their best to set up checks and balances to curb government's power. Despite their efforts, though, Uh if you look around... Today's federal government, it just keeps growing and lending and borrowing and taxing and regulating. It's it's all skewed. Mm-hmm. And and <laughs> government cannot even govern itself. OK, right. most of the programs that government has today does not work. Absolutely. I mean, it, some do, some don't. But, you know, I believe that the best work is done on the community level. Mm hmm. You know, the the best welfare programs are on the community level. Let the America is still the most benevolent country in the world. Mm-hmm. If you turn the regulations down and let the churches and the communities and the charities and do all of let let those institutions on the on the community level do what they need to do. Mm-hmm. That'll do more than any welfare program that the country, the government sets into place. No, I agree. Uh, I mean, bills are being passed by Congress that are so long, so complex, that no senator or congressman ever takes the time to read them before they become law. I mean, the the famous statement, we have to pass it before we know what's in it. What kind of baloney is that? (laughs) That's wrong on more levels than I can (laughs) say. That's like saying you're going to take a job before you know how much they're going to pay you. you Or before you know what it is. (laughs) Yeah. I've heard that researchers in the Library of Congress say that the, to tally the number of federal laws today is nearly impossible. I mean, there's so many, they're passing mm-hmm. four to 6,000 new regulations per year. Now, some regulations are being turned back now, but there's some being added too. It, it's ridiculous, the regulation. Now, I'm not saying that we shouldn't have any, mm-hmm. okay, but we swung the pendulum way too far. Absolutely. And government spending is completely out of control. Um, it, it's, it's ridiculous now. You think about this. A child that is born today. All right, my grandbaby was born, my third one. Congratulations to me. Yeah, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> you didn't give me an opportunity yeah. to say congratulations. <laughs> uh, you want to see a picture? <laughs> I've seen right. the real thing. <laughs> okay, she was born, what, three weeks ago? Uh, Already... According to the national debt, she's sixty five thousand dollars in debt. Yep. I mean that's ridiculous. Yep. For every American, we are sixty five thousand dollars in debt. You know the, the two. What is it? Was now twenty two? I think I looked it up 
a couple of days ago, $22 trillion, trillion dollars in debt. Now, I saw something, and it was on Facebook. Of course, you know, it's always true if it's on Facebook. So, Oh, yeah. But yeah. Uh, anyway, and it, and it makes sense. But they were basically stating that if you were to boil down every billionaire, okay, in the world. Yeah, I read that. Yeah. You read that? Yeah. And, and Not if, on Facebook, yeah. but on Real News. And Real News. <laughs> it was a link. Yeah. From Facebook yeah. to the real <laughs> okay. yeah, yeah. Anyway, but if you boil down all of their assets and put that all in one lump sum, that it would not keep America running eight months. Yeah. Yeah, it's Is ridiculous. Is that ridiculous? Yeah. Those yeah. are the evil people, by the way. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Those are the one The entrepreneurs. The, the yeah. evil people that are robbing the country's blind, and they can't keep one country running for eight months. Yeah, it's ridiculous. It doesn't make sense. Mm-hmm. You know, I think that we should respect the limits that the Constitution places on the government. The federal government should focus on its number one job, Mm -hmm. which, by the way, is defending the country from enemies and protecting basic human rights. It should never be smothering the businesses with regulations and burying this country in mountains of debt. Now... I know we're kind of getting off subject and we're and we're getting a lot of emotional value. And now does the book actually go into those mm-hmm. types of things? Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 I just want to reiterate that to us that there's a lot of our own opinions in this, but I just wanted to. Get no, back this to is the exactly book. right. Yeah, okay. we're, we're going by the book here. This is some things that you can learn from this book. Um, okay. uh, government has an important work to do. I mean, there's no doubt mm-hmm. about it, but it's. Its main task is helping society remain intact. Government is not the solution to everybody's problem. Right. All right. All those type, you know, community. I want to go back to that. When we place the burden back on the community, back on the churches, back on the charities, back on the things that uh, the, the NGOs that are for that, voluntary groups, even schools. And I think that if you put the burden back on them, America will rise to the task. Mm-hmm. But you take it away from them, of course we're going to get sloppy and lazy and not do. If we give it, if the government wants to take away uh, all of that and that we do as charities and put it on their shoulders, then what do we got to do? But if you give it back to us, Americans will rise to the occasion. Now, let me ask you this. Let me play devil's advocate with this. What happens if, if it was to be put back to the communities and it wasn't taken up? Then what? Well, we're, in this, we're down the rabbit hole now. It will probably take a generation or two to get back to where we need to be. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, you know, I got, I got confidence in, in, in America's youth today. Mm-hmm. I do. Look at, look at their social media. Look at the interest that they in. They love to be social. They love to be involved. They love to do charity works. Mm-hmm. I mean, in, in my generation... We were actually the lazy ones, mm-hmm. but I'm I'm really I'm really proud of this younger generation that's stepping up to the plate, saying, "Hey, you know what? Let's let's feed the hungry. Mm-hmm. You know, let's pick up the trash on the street. Let's get involved in in uh, you know areas where we can be a help and lift people up." Mm-hmm. Um, I think you just put it back on the level, and, well, and they they'll rise. And here's and I'm gonna be maybe honest. I'm maybe I'm being naive, but no, I've well, I've seen it. I'm actually going to jump on that bandwagon with with you because I'm all, I've been a millennial basher. I, you know I'm a I'm a you know Generation X kind of a borderline millennial, so I see both sides of the coin. Yeah. The problem is, and you know, we all want to bash millennials because every time you turn on the news, they're riding somewhere or, you know, doing some, uh, you know, protests here and a protest there. Mm -hmm. But if you think about it, it's because of the fact that they don't have a conservative focus that's being put into it. Oh, absolutely. So so imagine if those same kids and and you're right, Mm -hmm. they'll they'll immediately jump to the to the to the party to protest something that they're strongly against. It unfortunately is is that the the left and the liberal agenda has picked up on that. Oh sure, and has really using them as pawns. Has, re- yeah. has really just yeah. pretty much uh, came in and and set their place and used that as yeah. a bargaining chip, yeah. so to speak. The little European girl before the UN. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, come on, she didn't have a day. chance. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I should not be here. <laughs> I should be in school across the pond. I was like, you, you never said more truer words, <laughs> yeah. young lady. 
<laughs> Get your but, tail back in school. But if we, but if conservatives, if yeah. we were, con, you know, if we were to have done our job and have really coached these kids correctly and not let them get liberal, and again, you know, that's a big can of worms that I'm yeah. opening up because you know we've got schools that are doing that for us when our parents should actually. I be agree doing with it. that. But you know, if we could instill those values into those kids. Imagine what this country would look like at that point. Oh, yeah. I mean, you think about yeah. it, you know. Yeah, and I, and I think there is, believe it or not, there is a growing segment of conservative youth coming up. Now, the media wants to push the, the liberals and the right. Antifa group and all that. But I'm telling you, they're, in real America, mm-hmm. not in media America, but in real America, there's a conservative movement that is, that is sweeping this country. And I'm glad to see. Me too. Yeah. Me too. All right, now. We're going to look at the letter I, F-L-I. I stands for Individual Liberty. Now, the Declaration of Independent States, that all people are endowed by their Creator with certain unalienable rights. Okay, now, those rights include the right to liberty. Mm-hmm. Our liberty does not come from government. It is a gift from God. It, it, it's the government's job to protect that right. If you look out across history, you're going to realize that most people never really get to enjoy freedom. Mm-hmm. They live in countries or they've uh, lived in a, a period of time in history that was ruled either by kings, emperors, dictators, governments that told people how they must live. And I've been around the world 10 times, and I'm telling you, it's still true in many of the parts of the world today. But liberty, on the other hand, well, that's a rare and precious thing. (laughs) Absolutely. I mean, rare and precious thing. And conservatives are mindful that we can't take it for granted. We really can't. We've got to pass that, that liberty concept onto our children. Now, let me say... I heard one man say one time that liberty worth having requires virtues like self-restraint, honor, and respect for others. And what he means by that is is that liberty is not anarchy. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're not advocating with, you know, we can overthrow the government. We're not advocating that there be lasciviousness. Not advocating that at all. I think that when people neglect those duties, their their self-restraint, honor, and respect for other duty, then I think real liberty uh, disintegrates. I agree with that. Yeah. So when we don't take responsibility for ourselves, we don't take responsibility for our communities, government is going to assume it for us. Right. And whenever that happens, we're going to forfeit some of our liberty. So I think it's very important that we understand that liberty is not its not casting off all restraints. It is self-restraint, and it's respect and honor for others. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we could argue, you know, that all day long. <laughs> right. But that's a concept that just seems to blow right over some people's right. head. Liberty is like, hey, you know, I can do what I want to do, and I can, uh, you know, I don't have to listen to the government, and I don't have to obey the re- – yeah, you do. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Right. Well, without without restraint, you get chaos, and with chaos, nobody gets liberty. Yeah, you know? yeah. Now the letter N. We are on N. F L I N. N stands for national defense. Hello, where you're supposed to be. <laughs> no, that's right. <laughs> Conservatives have tremendous appreciation and gratitude for the United States Absolutely. military. Absolutely. To be a conservative is to grasp that men and women in the U.S. Armed Forces are engaged in what I feel to be a noble effort. Mm-hmm. Noble effort. Mm-hmm. And when, when, when one of our citizens, and I have a son that's in the, uh, in the Marine Corps, when, when our citizens and our children, when they enter into the military, they enter into an organization to defend our lives they pledge to defend our lives that and to defend of the lives of people that they don't even know mm-hmm. they live and perhaps sometimes die for other people that's a noble effort we have a volunteer army right and so when you volunteer to go stand on that wall for me you know i take my hat off absolutely i take my hat off uh, I, I still think that uh, we owe our liberty and we owe our existence as a country to the United States 
military. Mm-hmm. Well, and I don't care what branch you serve. Uh, it, 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 you all have my respect mm-hmm. with that. And I love this country. And, and I would, you know, if the, if the Pledge of Allegiance comes on, I take my hat off. Absolutely. You know, I don't, I don't take a knee disgracefully while right. the national anthem is being played. I believe in honoring this country and honoring the sacrifice that these men and women have made for me. Mm-hmm. I know and I get it that sometimes if you say I'm a conservative, they they say you're a warmonger. You know, you love war because war creates capitalism, you know, and it creates money. Conservatives understand that sometimes war is necessary, mm-hmm. but we don't love war. No, anybody that loves war is an they're just off their rocker. Yep. Nobody likes war. But sometimes war is necessary. And by the way, we can say that, you know, the United States is the police of the world and we shouldn't be in all these other places policing the world. Well, I'll tell you something. If we wasn't standing on that wall of liberty, they'll be over here. Mm-hmm. And the evil will be here and it'll be at our doorstep. And it's not racist. It's not extreme to think that we ought to have a, a, a presence, a military presence in some of these countries that are bent on destroying us. Mm-hmm. So uh, I believe in national defense. And uh, so the letter N stands for national defense. Now we get to the letter T. F, I think I'm spelling this right, right? Yep. F-L-I-N. T. T. <laughs> Traditional values. This is, boy, this is a big subject right here. No. Yeah. You know, not really, because the the family is an institution that conservatives strongly mm-hmm. support. Well, and I think that's why I say it's a big issue, because I think that's where most of this all stems from and where everything falls apart, is because I believe inside the family, yeah. the traditional fa- family values have mm-hmm. strayed so far. Yeah, we the media, our cultures yeah. dismantled the family unit. Absolutely, but conservatives believe that stability is in the traditional family unit. Right, and it's not it's not my place to define for you who you love and right. you know, all that kind. Of, listen, let's not get down that rabbit hole. Right, traditional values <clears throat> is is a conservative belief that there is a family unit created and existing of a man and a woman and children. And I'm not even getting into that. Uh, That wasn't what I meant by that subject. What I meant by that subject is the fact that, you know, the the family structure alone with how you obey rules and how your Absolutely, how yeah. your kids disobey in public. That's true. And you know that you can't whoop your kids in public. I'm a I'm a firm believer of whooping. I got whooped as a kid. <laughs> I whooped my kids. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, we didn't get whipped or spanked. We <laughs> are whooped. Whooped. <laughs> that that's that. That's a that's, that's a, a hillbilly word. <laughs> oh, whooped. <laughs> but you know, and I mean, and it's done, discipline is done correctly. It didn't and, warp and, uh, me, right? You know, yeah, and that's the that's thing. Right. If, if it's done correctly I, you know again i'm not advocating that you go home and beat your kids no that's, man, it's like no, you know, no 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 but no, a no. but a you know a stern paddling against the rear end where there's plenty of cushion i don't see any you know there's no wrong with it. But the problem is is it's it's become wrong and sure. now kids are now they start off at three four five and six year old to where they don't even have to obey you know, and so what happens when they turn 13, 14, 15, they're not obeying their parents. They're definitely not going to obey their teachers. And then before you know it, they're not they're not obeying law. They're not obeying. So from the family yeah, nucleus, everything yeah. has gone. It's astray. splintered in a lot of different directions. Right. There's no doubt about it. I don't blame the media as much as I blame the pulpit. Mm-hmm. No, and I agree with I, that. You know, it, it we dropped the ball in churches a long time ago and tr- we we failed to define what the family was and nail that down mm-hmm. and we've raised a generation that does not believe traditional family values and that's to our detriment mm-hmm. as individuals as a country it's been said that the family is the first and original department of health education and welfare it is the beginning where the moral training takes place but see a lot of that's been broken down today but but i i'm, I'm beginning to see uh, uh, honestly a move across our country getting back to 
some normality. Mm-hmm. You know, I think this generation coming up today is starting to to realize this thing's gotten out of hand. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't know who to call mommy. I don't know who to call. I don't have a daddy. I don't have, what. There's no structure. There's right. nothing there. I believe we're getting back to that, and I believe men and women are getting married and they are doing their best to make the marriage work. You know, in my generation, there was, you know, you're a good first uh, wife. (laughs) (laughs) You'll work till we get something better. Right. And that was the, a lot of the mentality, Mm -hmm. but I'm seeing a, a, a shift. I really am. I'm starting to see a shift in the mentality of some of these younger people saying this is you know when i get married this is for life right you know we're not going to try this out and if it don't work we'll go on to something else we're starting to see a great move of conservative young people come up and i think it's going to get even more momentum as the days go by and i'm, I'm glad to see it yeah yeah but you know when we talk about the family unit we also talked about uh, as a conservative we need to talk about the the sanctity of life that conservatives believe in. And that's a big thing that you see even in the political realm against liberals and conservatives mm-hmm. is that conservatives really want to protect the innocent. And that goes even to the unborn. Mm-hmm. We, we believe that we ought to protect all life. That's just a conservative value that has its roots right. in the Bible. Right. You know, this conservative principles here has its roots. These are some of the things I, we, that to answer your question mm-hmm. at the beginning that has its foundation and roots in the word of God. That life comes from God and all life is precious in the womb or out of the womb. Right. It is precious. And we as conservatives should protect it. The, the Declaration of Independence says that all of us are endowed by our creator with an, uh, unalienable rights, and that is the right to life. And so we we're, conservatives are very protective of life and should be, and I'm, we're starting to see um, some laws being passed to help in that. Now, you're seeing some liberal states like uh, New York and others that are passing these liberal, more liberal laws, and these abortion laws that even you can uh, uh, abort a baby outside the womb. I mean, this is ridiculous. Right. But those are the fringe, honestly, mm-hmm. because I'm seeing a lot of movement in main America, not media America, main America. We're starting to see a move toward the sanctity of life again. And the young people are starting to grab it and they're realizing that, hey, maybe we should start protecting life. There's right. value in that. Because if we do that to the baby, what are they going to do to me? Right, you exactly. Know? Where does this stop? It's a slippery slope, and that's, that's the problem. And they're there. starting to realize yeah. that. And so I, I'm, I'm encouraged with some of the things that I'm seeing today. We're part of a, a movement here in our hometown that a couple of years ago, it's a, a movement to support life. A couple of years ago, there was just a handful of people that would meet together and, and, and fundraise and, and all that. But now I'm talking about hundreds and, and even thousands of people that are meeting now, even in our own community. Well, the last one that I went to, me and Erica went to, it was a banquet for uh, the, the local yes, one Yes, you were, you yeah, were there. there was one. like yeah. a thousand people in that room. I yeah. mean, it was huge. I, yeah. it was so, I was Abortions amazed are was down yeah, in, in our city. And now every, uh, I mean, I'm not going to be happy until I see none. Right. You know. But I am seeing it come down, and right. that's, I mean, that's a good, good indicator that hey, we're we're seeing some movement here in this new generation. I'm encouraged with it. I really am. Now, with that book, does it uh, does it get into a structure in the house? Does it even explain sure. like you know what a good structure of a home sure. looks like yep. and that kind of yep. deal? It talks about traditional values and what that should be. Gotcha. America the Strong. That's the name of the book. Uh, mm-hmm. Conservative ideas to spark the next generation. So. If nothing else, you can take away from the podcast that we are Flint. <laughs> we are Flint. Not we hard. are Flint <laughs> conservatives. We are not Flintstones. <laughs> we are hard rock conservatives. <laughs> hard rock conservatives. <laughs> Whatever that may be. Right. But it, it, those, that, acro- uh, that acrostic will help you define in a conversation, well, you're conservative. What does that mean? Well, then you can be able to rattle off. And this book will help you with that. So get it, read it. I think it'll be an encouragement to you. Even if you disagree with a lot of things in the book, it still, 
I think it's a it's a great week. Well, it'll let you even you know even if you're on the other side of the fence, you know, we'll pray for you. But if you're on the other <laughs> side of the fence, you know, at least give you some ammunition to I, be able to have a, 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 a t- intelligent debate. Because absolutely, I've been in with some, and it's I like, read things on the other side of the fence. I, I got. I've been yeah. in some de- debates, and it's like, am I even talking to a real person? Yeah. Like, how is it? <laughs> Gotcha. <laughs> How do you believe that? But anyway, <laughs> that's a topic for another subject. Yeah, but. yeah. America the Strong, William J. Bennett, John T. Cribb. Got it. All right. Well, that wraps it up for uh, today and tonight's podcast. Yeah, it's actually, late at night. We're doing it late tonight. Good gracious. So, but uh, anyway, we appreciate you guys hanging in there with us. Um, if you uh, have any comments or questions for us, please leave them in the uh, sections below. Uh, we do have a website, by the way. Uh, it's still a work in progress, but we're going to start getting some this up it is go read some books.com and uh of course we're on uh, youtube and uh, your favorite podcasting apps which are whichever way you're listening to us so if you're on the podcast you can also watch this conversation live on uh youtube well it's not really live it's recorded but um you can still watch the you know the conversation unfold we're also on social media instagram uh, facebook twitter I haven't really done much with Twitter. I'm not a big Twitter guy, but I think I'm going to put you in charge of that. But hmm. uh, anyway, so you can yeah, find us. Tech is a tree. What's that? I'm as tech as a tree. Tech is a tree. <laughs> 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 you can find us in all these different outlets. We'd love to chat, love to hear your comments about what we talk about, and even give us some ideas on some books that you might uh, want us to take a dive into. And uh, see what You would be surprised since we started this how many books. I Hey, yeah. I thought I got a lot of books before. <laughs> People are like, can you read this? Tell me what you think. Be like, no, ma'am, that is garbage. That book's six hundred pages. You know, <laughs> I haven't read in about three days. You know, six hundred pages in three days. That would take me a year and a half to read that book. And three days is a long time in my book. Anyway, that's it. We'll wrap it up. Anything else you want to add before we go? Go read some books. Go read some America books. America the Strong. America, baby. America. All right. Anyway, that's it for tonight, guys. God bless, and we'll catch you next. Take care. Time.